what is good everybody this is your cosmic homegirl and i am doing the weekly forecast for all of us for all signs for the week beginning may 16th 2021 and ending with may 23rd of 2021 and uh don't forget i do still have horoscopes available on my website indigomoonastrology.com um, may is still available i'm gonna be working on june very soon and working on some other special stuff for you guys don't forget, there's still the 2021 horoscopes that go over all of the most important transits for the year. Um, in May, we have Jupiter that just entered Pisces. We have Mercury Retro popping. We have an eclipse popping this month. Um, so definitely check out the May horoscopes to see how they'll affect your sign. But I do really go in on those transits as well in the 2021 yearlies. And not just the ones for this month in May. But for the whole damn year, okay? Because don't forget, Jupiter and Pisces last like a few months. The eclipse season lasts the whole year. You know what I'm saying? There's Mercury retrograde now. There's going to be Mercury retrograde at the end of the year. There's going to be Venus retro. Like, what you want to know? I got you. <laughs> so I still have the yearlies available on my website um, and the monthlies for May, okay? So don't forget to check those out for more info on the stuff I'm going to be speaking about for this week. So what is cracking, you guys? We are already in Mercury shadow period, okay? And um, as I always talk about and post about and joke about and stuff, yeah, the shadow period matters. Just because Mercury is retrograde date to where it starts giving the uh, effects and the illusion of moving backwards, it doesn't start until May 29th. The shadow period is two weeks before, okay? And if we want to be super nerds about it and see how and why, well, it's all about what degrees the planet is in the sign, okay? So Mercury goes retrograde, what is it, like 24 degrees or some shit? Hold on, like 23, 24, 24 degrees, okay? 24 degrees of Gemini is when it goes retro. And then it goes back to um, 16 degrees, okay? So from 24 to 16 degrees of Gemini is that uh, period within um, the degrees with the of range within, um, you know, that Mercury is traveling through that are kind of wonky, you know what I'm saying? So as long as Mercury is within those degrees, 16 to 24, he's not going to be acting right. <laughs> so he hit 16 degrees about like the 14th, the 15th of May. And so, you know, last week we did start to notice the effects of Mercury being in shadow. I don't know about you guys, but I sure have shit. Like the typos of it all with trying to text people or email or whatever has been annoying. Um, I had uh, somebody email me and I got the little notification and then the shit didn't even, it disappeared. And like, oh my God, it's just, irritating right <laughs> um so this is the time you guys to check your vehicles you know check your communication devices back up all your data and your information and make sure you double check things before you send them to people make sure you're slowing down and reading stuff too and i know mercury and gemini doesn't like to fucking read like it just doesn't mercury and gemini likes to skim and catch every other word and then act like it knows what it's talking about but um, so I know it's going to be hard, like it's so hard to ask that of ourselves while Mercury's in Gemini in general, but then retrograde though and shadow period included. And then also Mercury is developing a square to Neptune in Pisces. Like once Mercury gets up to 22 degrees, which is going to be um, this weekend, you know, I'll talk about it when I go in day order, but Mercury squaring Neptune, yeah, um, he's already building up to that as the week begins, so that's like confusion in the mix, so yeah, there's there's a lot going on with Mercury being in his shadow period, he's just not doing too well, <laughs> people are not absorbing information very well, people are forgetting shit with, with it being square to Neptune, and just with Mercury moving too fast you know when he's in gemini and now he's like skipping over things because he's in shadow period even more than usual it's quite annoying dealing with gemini's personally look no disrespect gemini people okay but yeah like i deal with a gemini moon every single day <laughs> um one of my kids is a gemini moon and i have to repeat things like three or four times to him right now 
in order for him to really absorb the information that I'm saying to him. And I'm like, dude, I just told you that, you know, and it's, it's so irritating. And I know you guys can't help it. Your little brains, like they move so fast anyway. Um, I always call him Tasmanian devil brain boy, <laughs> Tasmanian devil moon boy. Um, because that's how, you know, Gemini's brains work. It's like, you know, Mercury is, uh, Gemini is an air sign and Mercury in air is like a tornado, you know, you know, the Tasmanian devil character off of like the Looney Tunes and stuff. He's like a little tornado just whipping around, you know, and that's how your guys' minds work. You really can't help it. So now imagine Mercury, Lord have mercy. I really feel for you, Gemini's. <laughs> I really do. It's. It's crazy. Um, you guys are probably frustrated with your damn selves, you know, and not just people getting frustrated with you guys around you. But yeah, even though even us non Gemini people, um, non Mercury ruled people have been finding ourselves, you know, when you read back over text messages, are you seeing like stupid shit that doesn't make sense? And you're like, oh, my God, did I really type that? Like, I, <laughs> I wasn't trying to, I swear. Yeah, that's really, really irritating, especially for earth signs who like to be correct about everything and, you know, thorough and stuff. And then we go back and we read our shit and it's like, what the hell <laughs> is this? I was not trying to say that. It's so irritating. So, yeah, you guys, Mercury's in shadow. He's up to his little his little tricks right now, doing some things, you know, doing a little too much. Um and uh, it's it's really annoying. And then plus the square to Neptune. Be careful with losing stuff, like losing track of things, losing track of time, especially. But your material items and stuff. Um, I worked one one of my <laughs> several quote unquote regular jobs. Um, you know, this past weekend, Mercury is squaring Neptune, and I had to handle money. And I am really good with handling money. I've been. Uh, you know in and out of the finance world and many different positions since i was a kid okay handling money counting money and always i'm like 98 percent, 99 let me just let me just toot my own horn for a second say 99 percent accuracy with counting money and not losing shit okay for my whole history of working in any type of financial anything but yo i fucking oh my god like money got lost when I was working and they're going to dig to find the lost money. But I'm like, how can I lose money like that? This Mercury square Neptune shadow is he's annoying. I'm like, yo, don't be chipping away from my pockets like that. Um, it was crazy. I was working and I was outside and the wind was blowing Mercury and Gemini shit, the wind, right? Wind was blowing. Wind almost blew money away a few times. I had to chase it around. Like it was crazy. It was so crazy. So yeah, you guys keep track of everything right now. All your little material items that you carry around daily, your keys, your debit card, your wallet, um, all that stuff is so easy to lose right now. So really be careful. Okay. So, um, let's see what else is going on this week though. We have the moon being in cancer. Okay. The moon is in cancer until the 17th. Um, mm, the moon can join to Mars over this weekend. How are you guys doing though? Like, was anybody extra angry and pissed off or like, you know, emotionally impulsive this weekend? Uh, let us know. But on uh, Sunday, the 16th, the moon is moving away from um, Mars a little bit more and, you know, calming down a little bit. But then she's opposing Pluto. So she's kind of like, you know, in, in destruction mode over some emotional stuff. Um, first with Mars and then opposing Pluto. Yeah, she's ready to like cut people off. And, you know, cancer energy loves to do that. Just shelter themselves from the world and say, anybody that doesn't really care about me, fuck them. I don't, I don't like them and I don't need them around. Yo, I totally get it, Cancers. I totally get it. You know, we all have Cancerian-esque transits. Um, when stuff transits our fourth house, especially, everybody can get like that, you know? So that's how the Cancerian energy is. So we might be having a little taste of that vibe of being emotionally intense this whole weekend um, under the Cancer moon. Normally, she's all cozy and comfy and stuff. You know what I mean? She wants to just chill out in her jammies and her fuzzy slippers and under the blankies and just eating comfort foods and you know being all sweet and nurturing but these two planets mars and pluto are planets of fucking war man like the moon she doesn't 
dig that energy very much she's uncomfortable you know so that's kind of how our mood and our attitudes can be under this cancer moon unfortunately um so then on the 17th there is um a really special transit that you know you may or may not notice it you guys it all depends on where it lands in your chart and you know what i'm saying like what aspects it makes to this that or the other but we have venus and the north node in a conjunction with each other in gemini so venus rules money and love just to keep it basic keep it simple she rules what we enjoy as human beings like if we like to eat or drink or feel things you know physically feel stuff feel the materials of things on our skin if we'd like to buy and purchase things you know she she rules all of that right and uh, just enjoyment enjoyment of material things physical things and the presence and company of other people um venus rules beauty and stuff like that right so the north node it can rule um things that we are currently super obsessed with it's one celestial uh influence you know celestial i would say body but the north node is not a physical thing floating around up there so celestial like influence right um that can rule things that we are currently super obsessed with and we can't get enough of and you know i'm like hella old school and i i compare the north node to pac-man uh the old pac-man video game to where he's you know he's just chomping away constantly like that's how the north node makes you feel it's an insatiable appetite and you know shout out to astro lada one of my og teachers for um teaching you know this concept that i um apply to my astrological studies and practices too is uh it's the dragon's head that has an insatiable appetite it's missing the la the other half of its body so it's like you know just like constantly chomping because it's it's not satisfied um because it has nothing to it's like a bottomless pit there's nothing no pit for things to fall into and say ah that feels better you know so that's how we can be super obsessed with things with the north node right so venus can join to the north node here's the good and the bad um <clears throat> excuse me um well the north node also rules very karmic and fated and destined events and people right so um that can also come into play here well let's talk about the material world and, and money and stuff and buying shit you know with uh venus venus and the north node can make you obsessed with buying things right especially if this is landing in a money house for you like if you are a taurus or taurus rising or if you are a scorpio or scorpio rising um this is going to be in your second house or your eighth house or if it lands in like your ninth house, you know, which is the house of Jupiter, which is the house of just feeling jolly and merry and, you know, and, and wanting to just live it up. Um, let's see who has Gemini in the ninth house. I think that's Aquarius rising or Libra, uh, Libra risings. Yeah. If you're a Libra or Libra rising, you know, you could be wanting to just live your best life. And that can include just not looking at your bank account, just, you know, straight up swiping that card, cha-ching or whatever, buying things online or whatever. And, um, yeah, just wanting to live your best life through the material world. So, um, it can have us obsessed with shopping, with material things, with Venusian things, with wanting to wear perfume or cologne or body spray or obsessed with like scented candles and, you know, wanting your environment and yourself to smell good, feel good, look good. Um, much obsession with stuff like that, with Venusian things, right? It can also make you obsessed with money right now, like thinking about money, making money, saving money, spending money, investing money um spending money you know super obsessed with money right now and once again especially if you're a taurus rising if you're a scorpio rising um who has gemini in the 10th virgos virgo risings this could be about like your career making money based on your career um you guys are super obsessed with that right now and just blocking everything else out you know and just like hella focused right um when it comes to love and dating and stuff you know people could be obsessed with romance and dating right now in general no matter where this is at in your chart but especially of course if gemini is in one of your love houses 
Um, if Gemini is your fifth house, like you're an Aquarius rising, if Gemini is your seventh, if you're a Sagittarius or Sagittarius rising, if Gemini is your eighth, if you're a Scorpio or Scorpio rising, okay? So this can make you very obsessed with um, love, romance, and dating at this time, <laughs> okay? But also because this is karmic and faded and destined events, Venus with the North Node can make something pop up for you that has to do with money and finances, you know, like an opportunity or something that's just destined to happen. It's like, whoa, this is a blessing from the universe. This is just like popping up out of nowhere or whatever. Um, Venus and the North Node can make you feel like that. When it comes, you can meet somebody out of the blue also and have some faded meeting that's of love. And it's like, whoa, you know, where this person come from, especially if you are a masculine energy person and you're attracted to feminine energy, okay? Um, Venus is feminine energy. You can have a faded meeting with a feminine energy that's just like, whoa. But even if you're not, like Venus in general is love, you know? So um, you can have some sort of destined faded event that has to do with love just pop up. Or if you are already involved with someone, this could be like next level shit when it comes to your connection or relationship or something. That's a decision that's made. That's like, you know what? I'm going towards my destiny when it comes to love. Destiny is a North Node. Love is Venus. And I'm just going after it or them. So it could be it could be uh, pretty dope. But yeah, if you're on a budget, though, <laughs> this this uh, transit could be trouble or if you're trying to like stick to one person and then you just happen to meet another really dope ass person, like this could be trouble for you. Or it's in Gemini, which likes variety and just to flirt just for the sake of it. Um, so this can get you in a little bit of trouble, you know. Uh, so just watch out for that. But Venus and the North Node, yeah, just pay attention, you guys. Um, this time is Pacific time, you know, in, in the U.S., but, you know, just work with your time zone and pay attention if you can. I know there's a lot of Gemini in the sky. People have zero fucking attention span. But if you can pay attention um, on the 17th, what's going on, you know, with money or love, either with you or people around you? And uh, yeah, let us know. Like, come back and comment or something. And, and um, so we can all learn and stuff, you know? So yeah, that's very interesting. Also, on this day, on the 17th, this is when the moon moves into Leo for a few days. Moon and Leo days. You already know it's all about your hair. It's all about being fab. Okay, it's all about strutting. It's all about wearing gold. It's all about um, just looking good, feeling good, you know, knowing that you're the shit, <laughs> knowing that you look good, knowing that you smell good and that, you know, you got it going on and who wouldn't want this, right? So it's a very regal energy, but moon and Leo days, people can have a little extra attitude and a sense of entitlement. So just watch out for that. But it does give you a boost in your confidence, your self-esteem under this Leo energy. All right. So, um, that's from the 17th until the 19th. So also on the 17th, we have this aspect of the sun making a trine aspect to Pluto. It's like super hella early over here on in the US, right? It's like mad early in the morning. Ninjas are asleep, probably having dreams that are sun trine Pluto related. You know, the sun is also like, um, it's our ego. It's our identity that we consciously uh, share out into the world, you know, so, um, but the sun is our vitality and stuff like that. Um, sun trine Pluto, a trine is a positive aspect. So the sun trine Pluto, um, Pluto is about power, money, power, respect. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what this could be about, but P the sun trine Pluto can be something to do with power, personal power, and just feeling more like you do you're a boss you know what i'm saying like like you can do things you can push through because pluto is about being a survivalist like no matter what happens you know you have life and death in front of you and which are you going to choose and how you're going to get through that um fighting through the trench the trenches when it comes to life um that's what the sun and pluto can it can just give you a lot of willpower like personal power to push through 
And it doesn't matter what, you know, struggles you're going through, what strife you may have. Um, this is an aspect that really helps you to say, you know what, I'm going to shed away the old. Um, this could be people because the sun is closely related to your identity. So the sun trying Pluto can be something about your identity. Um, you're trying to protect, you know, because Pluto is about protection and security and privacy. So maybe there's something that makes you feel like you want to be a little more low key and protective of um, the sun trying Pluto. It can make you just, yeah, just have more of a sense of self-empowerment pretty much. Okay. So um, I usually sun and Pluto aspects could be power struggles. Trines are positive aspects, but the way I can see this is uh, possibly having um, a power struggle is you're feeling yourself, you know, and your personal power and somebody tries to challenge that. And you're like, respect my authority. You know what I'm saying? So, or other people could be like that towards you. Um, and you're like, what, like, what makes you think you're the shit and you can just, you know, talk to me that way or whatever, um, issues with authority figures because you're in your own personal power and your own sense of authority. So that is really popping on the 17th. Okay. Now we move to the 18th and this is when, um, I, what did I write? Mercury at the June eclipse point. What's the June? What? Let's see. Okay, 19 degrees of Gemini. So June 10th, we have an eclipse at 19 degrees of Gemini. So whenever we're super close to eclipses, you guys, pay attention to when other planets, like, you know, Mercury, Venus, and Mars especially, when when they are hitting the, the um, eclipse point, like the degree and the sign of the most uh, upcoming eclipses, you know, the eclipses that are closest to you coming up. So... Yes, it looks like on the 18th, Mercury's at the eclipse point. So pay attention to things going on that day. If you're a person that likes to journal, you know, like journal what's going on that day. What are your thoughts? What's going on around you? Because um, that can indicate, it can like give you kind of a little sneak preview into what that eclipse in June might be bringing to you. And remember, I always say that the eclipse is, the date of the eclipse, you can see, hear, feel, and experience the effects of it up to like a month before. And we're already in that zone, okay? The month before zone. So yeah, that 19 degrees of Gemini is hot right now for, you know, any planet passing or, or hitting that point is, is hot, you know, a hot spot for, um, there's like the portal, the portals are really open, like the, um, the portals to the unknown and to, the other side and stuff like that when we are in eclipse season so most definitely pay attention to when planets hit the eclipse points <clears throat> excuse me so anything that's like 19 degrees of gemini right now like i said it looks like only mercury mercury and venus are going to both hit those degrees um in the month of may so yeah definitely pay attention may 18th the portal is open. What are your thoughts? What type of downloads are you getting? What insights are you are you receiving? Stuff like that, okay? All right, all right. So now we move on to um, the 19th, and this is when the moon moves into Virgo for a few days. So you guys know the drill. Moon and Virgo days. It's like, okay, I'm done being fabulous and whipping my hair around and, you know, even if you don't ha have hair, you're doing that little invisible Leo hair flip. <laughs> so um, it's like that time, party time is over, and now it's time to get to work, literally. Because Virgo is a sign, <clears throat> excuse me, Virgo is a sign that rules work and doing your job and stuff like that. So it's time to um, get organized and get your life and worry about more practical things instead of being cute. It's more about, hmm, do my plants need to be watered? Does my house need to be cleaned? You know what I'm saying? What, let me look at my calendar, my planner, my schedule, whether you have it in like a written, like an old school, like a paper one, or if you have things like uh, digital electronic calendars and planners and stuff like on your devices. It's time to organize shit. And my advice is like during the um, moon and Virgo days when we all feel like organizing things and stuff, since we're in Mercury shadow period, yes, this is a time to organize your, like, say, for example, in your phone, you have a lot of photos, you have files that are important to you. Make sure you back all that stuff up. 
moon and virgo days are really good for that like organizing okay well this could be deleted this is not important like clean out your devices back up the most important information um your computer included you know have that external hard drive or whatever flash drives back your shit up moon and virgo days will help you to be motivated to do as such and also to do other practical tasks you know what i'm saying like um if you have a vehicle of any sort remember mercury shadow mercury retrograde the fuckery is real with your vehicles okay so moon and virgo days will have you thinking hmm is everything operating properly and if it's not you know how can i make it operate properly what tasks need to be done so um use the, those days so that's the 19th through the 21st to really be on top of your game all right even if you have paper files you know a lot of people don't do paper anymore but if you have paper files to go through um and back up your information yes definitely do that organize your shit okay so then um on the 19th we also have venus trying saturn okay so saturn he's hanging out at that 13th degree like pretty much the whole month yeah, the whole entire month of May, because he's slowing down and getting ready to go retrograde, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Shatter, shatter, oh Lord. Here we go, Mercury. <laughs> Making me sound illiterate AF. Saturn is going to go retrograde on the 23rd. So we'll cover that in a minute. But um, he's, you know, hanging out at that th 13th degree, though, slowing down. He's making us look at things a little more objectively and stuff. And um, so Venus is trying Saturn. So this could be a day to where people want to solidify things They, uh, when it comes to love or money. You could be looking at your finances a little bit more closely, um, especially because the moon switches to Virgo that same day. Oh, yeah, this is about, you know, seeing what works and what doesn't when it comes to money, seeing um, the value in things and who stays and who goes, what stays and what goes. Venus trying Saturn when it comes to relationships and love and stuff it's really like anything Venus and Saturn <laughs> just like when Venus was um square Saturn last month and I um I was telling you guys like how it reminds me of that little lyric on Erica Badu's song Tyrone call Tyrone like I'm getting tired of your shit you don't never buy me nothing that's Venus and Saturn so it's like Hmm, you know, it's seeing the value in things when it comes to relationships. Um, it could be valuing yourself and then wanting to put up boundaries between yourself and others that don't value you. Mm hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. OK, I'm all about that life. <laughs> OK, so Venus trying Saturn can really be about that. Um, putting up boundaries is Saturn, you know, or it could be if people are always borrowing money from you or something like that, you could start to put up a boundary like, nah, man, like this isn't cool. Get your own shit, get a job, do something. Um, Venus trine Saturn. It can be, mm, yeah, it could be like looking at the long run when it comes to love or when it comes to money, looking at investments and whether that's like you literally invest money in like stocks or this or that or you know cryptocurrencies or anything but it can be like which what you purchase you may be a little more careful with when venus is making this exact trying to saturn like she's still with the north node making people want to just really swipe those cards or you know use that apple pay or whatever you use to pay for things but then once she creeps up into a conversation with Saturn, she's a little more serious and like, wait, you know, if I purchase this, how long is it going to last? Is this just something I like in the moment? There's some cheap stuff that's going to fall apart? Or is this something that, you know, a few years from now, it's still going to be good? So you could be really thinking about stuff like that under that energy. Okay, so on the 20th, this is when the sun moves into Gemini. Okay, so this is, of course, when people are like, Gemini season, hey, uh, you know what it's like. Pff, look, we already have the North Node, Venus and Mercury up in this bitch. Okay, it, it there's been a Gemini party in the sky. Like, where have you been, people? Sun sign only people are late to the fucking Gemini party. <laughs> Too bad for them, right? But we do. You know how we do around here. We already know. It, there's been a Gemini party, like 
we've already been on it with trying new things and wanting to talk a little bit more and being chatty and cracking the jokes, sharing the memes and, you know, all that fun Gemini shit. We've already been doing that. And here comes the sun and it's like, oh, hey, what's up, dude? You're a little late to the party, but what's good? You know, welcome. Um, and the rest of the world who only follows sun signs is like, finally, it's our season. Gemini's, you guys have you guys have already been on your shit man already been on top of your game for a minute um in the month of may so don't let any any of those sun sign only posts or people fool you and think that your season hasn't already begun okay but yes once the sun is here it's more of what everyone can see because literally what what can we see can we see venus and mercury in the sky like when we physically literally look up there no like usually we can't it depends on how close they are and it depends on all this nerdy shit right but everyday life we can see the sun right there you know so because of that that's why everybody is so familiar with the sun and the sign it equals our season or whatever but anyway i enough of my little sun sign uh tangent and rant yes gemini's happy birthday to you guys in advance to all gemini's Um, you guys are some of the most freaking fun people in the world, I swear. And I know I talk, I talk shit about every sign, you know, it's just how I am as a sixth house where we just clown on everything and you know what I'm saying? But, um, and everything and everyone, but, um, Gemini's guests personally, I have love hate relationships with you guys, but yo, seriously, your energy is so much fun. It's lighthearted. It's like, it's all about not being stuck in one spot and not being stuck in one mood, you know, like wallowing in sorrow and, you know, like your neighboring signs, Taurus and Cancer can wallow in some shit and just stay there and stay the same and stay in their comfort zones. Not Gemini. You guys are like, hey, you guys stay right there. I'm going to go over here and try this. I'm going to go over there and try that. And so you guys are always up on the newest and latest stuff and always being able to give the tea because you're in the know because you actually put yourselves out there to be in the know, you know, like (laughs) that sounded so stupid to be in the know, you know, but anyway, um, yeah, because you guys actually are always looking around, always observing and and gathering information and stuff so you you guys are the ruling sign of communication of news um mostly news publications like little articles and little blurbs and headlines and stuff like that you know magazines if anybody reads magazines anymore right it's mostly articles online people read but even like short podcasts and stuff like that that's all gemini teams so um you guys are the rulers of that, of spreading information to everybody. So, you know, and also, yeah, gossip. Okay, Gemini's are the kings and queens of gossip. Um, you guys know I always mention Wendy Williams because she's one of the most well-known gossip people. And Wendy has, I want to say Venus and Mars in Gemini, I think. I know she has two planets in Gemini in her fifth house. So... And then she has the sun in the sixth house. Yeah, she's super mercurial. That's why she's nosy and she likes the gossip and the tea. And she always delivers it. <laughs> so yeah, um, there's good and bad to Gemini. But, you know, we're all going to get a taste even more of Gemini energy once the sun enters. And um, Gemini colors are more light, fresh energy colors like greens and and uh uh, yellows and stuff like that are gemini colors or um any bright colors i i think a gemini gemini is like even like bright any any bright colors are going to be gemini because their their energy is very bright like hey what's up everybody i'm here hey what's good you know so um gemini rules the arms and the hands and the wrists and stuff so you'll notice a lot of gemini people will rock a lot of tattoos on their hands or their wrists or their arms and gemini um people will rock like you know be the ones to rock a lot of jewelry like rings and bracelets and stuff like that um and yeah there's just so much i can say you guys but it's gemini season quote unquote officially i guess (laughs) starting on may 20th and ending on june 20th that's when the sun leaves gemini 
and goes into cancer and it's time for us to all fucking cry about shit i'm just kidding kind of sort of all right so on the 21st we have the moon moving into libra where's she at where's she at where's she at um here she is moon and libra so if you live elsewhere other than the u.s it could be the 21st um if you're more east of us but yeah moon and libra days are ones to wear it's all about being pretty and cute you know being well liked by everyone and being peaceful and getting along with everyone and all that good stuff and aesthetic aesthetic is the libra word okay aesthetic it's all about the aesthetics so we could be more into art and beauty and beautifying ourselves and our world around us yada 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 libra is the sign of relationships partnerships so people could be more focused on being booed up and all of that you know all those posts where people are like look at my babe and me and my babe and all that stuff yeah 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 whatever <laughs> but moon and libra days i always say this every month because i'm a taurus you know we can be repetitive with things but they are days to where people crave partnership a little more and yeah people that don't have partnership or love in their life could be a little haterish under moon and libra days like how come i don't have a bay where's my boo so yeah you can kind of feel like oh man i wish i had me, 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 me. so yeah that's that kind of sucks about moon and libra days but if it's not that, you could just be more flirtatious in nature and just flirting with everybody just to get compliments and, you know, give compliments back. Libra is about balance, giving and receiving. You you um, give what you receive, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's about getting your life and balancing things out and looking at the uh, things in life from other people's perspectives other than your own on Libra Moon Days. And yes, being cute and being in the mirror <laughs> a lot, taking selfies and all that. Okay, so also we have um, on the 21st, the sun. Wait, wait a sec. We're, okay, the sun, yeah, oh, here we go. Sun square Jupiter. Okay, sun square Jupiter. All right, so um, the sun in Gemini, it's zero degrees of Gemini. Um, Jupiter is zero degrees of Pisces, and they're both mutable signs, and they square each other on the zodiac wheel. So that means that there's tension between them. They're not having the, the most happiest of conversations. However, Jupiter is a very happy planet. It's nothing. It's about nothing but happiness and joy and being jovial and all that shit, right? So, sorry, you guys, Mercury and Gemini, my phone is just popping with notifications. I'm sure you guys are all getting that. <laughs> anyway, so, Sun square Jupiter. Now, like I said, Jupiter is happy. So, we can all be feeling extra happiness and stuff. Um, but it can be happiness that is, hmm, I don't want to say the word false. But it's not backed up by much of substance, if that makes sense. Like Jupiter, it, it's a bunch of hot air, right? Literally, the planet is a bunch of hot air and gases. You know, people say, oh, you can gas, people gas you up, meaning they just speak a lot of bullshit to kind of make you feel good about yourself, you know, but there's not much really behind it. Um, sun square Jupiter can be that type of a vibe, unfortunately, on the negative side. It can also make us not look realistically at anything in life, especially because it's Pisces energy. But it can also be that way, like with your finances, with anything. You just don't see limits. You don't see boundaries. You just go after things. You don't think about the consequences. Um, so wherever this is at in your chart, wherever Gemini and Pisces are at in your chart, whatever areas of life they rule could be kind of at odds with each other at that time so you just need to watch out for that so yeah but it can make people a little more in in a happier mood and stuff and feeling like hey i got it all i've got it made but really it's like what's behind that besides your mood and your attitude and your your thoughts of that your thought process being that of abundance and greatness and stuff but it's like okay well how can you what do you have to show for that here in the material, tangible world, though? You know, you can go online and post stuff and comment all day, like, that's very Jupiterian in nature under this transit. 
um, and try to inspire others. But what does your life really look like, though? Like, is it a fucking mess or what? <laughs> you know, we have this mutable energy all up in the sky. We've got all this Gemini. We've got Jupiter and Pisces and the moons in Virgo that day. So it could be a day to where people don't take everything that people say or post on social media for face value because it can be like, oh, look at me. Like, my life is great. I'm living my best life. But really, huh, their life is a mess. You look around their house and it's all fucked up, you know, like you look at their bank account and it's negative or, you know, they're posting this stuff and looking all happy and great and just living it up. But really, once they like were finished taking that picture, they went to go cry somewhere because their life really isn't that great. They're broke. Uh, their place is in shambles. They're really in distress, you know? So don't believe everything that you see, everything that you hear, unfortunately, under sun square Jupiter. And then plus also on the 21st, um, this is when we're really building up to that exact Mercury and Neptune square, okay? It really starts on the 21st. Um, let's see. I already talked about the moon and Libra. Yeah. But once we get to the, um, once we get to the 22nd, this is when we have Mercury and, um, Neptune squaring each other. And then the sun and Jupiter are also squaring each other still. So everything may not be as it seems, especially towards the end of the week. That energy is super strong. You guys, this is the weekend, you know, so if anybody like goes out on the weekend, you try to meet people on the weekend and stuff. This is one of those ones where I would say, yo, be very careful and, and thoroughly investigate motherfuckers that you meet. Okay. Because they may seem like too good to be true. Um, they can portray themselves as something that they're not. They could tell you all these sweet little nothings, you know, Jupiter and Neptune, especially both in their home signs of Pisces, they can be trickster energy, meaning like they, they look so innocent and sweet and, oh yeah, I can do this for you. We could do that and da, 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 da. But in the end, there's not much behind, you know, to back it up. So just be careful, like. Um, of the things that people say, things people do and promise under these transits, this could be very promising more than they can deliver. And also you yourself, be careful because you could be doing that or you can fool even your own self, like think that you can handle this and handle that and do this and do that. And yeah, yeah, I do. I could do it. I got it. I got it. But in reality, when you really look around, it's like, yo, wait a second, you know, look at time, look at your schedule and stuff. It's like, wait, I really can't do this. Um, I really can't back this up, you know, and I already said that I could. Um, yeah, these energies can equate to some stuff like that. So just, just be careful, you guys, you know, don't take everything people say and promise for, uh, for uh, face value. And um, don't promise more than you can deliver. Be real with yourself um and all and be be real with other people okay and yes please pay attention when you're driving <laughs> because mercury and neptune square is like you it could be you getting lost in your music and then you just don't really pay attention to where you're going you get lost mercury neptune transits always make people get lost omg like i can really attest to this <laughs> I'm like the fucking queen of getting lost and being stupid. Like, you know what I mean? Because I have uh, moon and Pisces and it squares my Neptune. So I'm like the queen of getting lost, you guys. So I can tell you guys this transit, the moon rules the mind, but so does Mercury. You could just pay attention because you can easily just do something stupid. Like you're on your way to work and you miss your exit off the freeway or you missed like the street you're supposed to turn on, you know, just be careful. Just slow down pay attention, maybe turn the music off <laughs> when you're trying to really get somewhere important on time because Neptune doesn't give a shit about time. Um, Pisces doesn't give a shit about time. Jupiter and Pisces really doesn't give a shit about time. It's like, woo, gives a fuck about the calendar or the clock. Let's just do this. Let's do what we want. So yeah, th that energy is super popping, you guys, towards the end of the week. Um, it can be good for art and romance, but practical things, uh, no ma'am, no sir. 
okay so on the 23rd this is when we have saturn going retrograde in aquarius okay so saturn is already in his shadow period and um i'm noticing some things right so you know aquarius is about the people it's about the people as a collective taking care of everybody as a collective saturn is our leaders and stuff one thing that i've noticed here in the u.s that they've done is while saturn and aquarius has tried to take care of its people uh uranus you know it's squaring uranus and taurus right uranus and taurus is all about money okay money food um you know commerce and stuff like that so saturn square uranus like it's like okay let's try to take care of our people let's try to take care of the collective they've been giving the u.s stimulus checks they've been giving the u.s extra food stamps extra unemployment but now what are they doing they're they're backtracking on that shit now you know the unemployment they're snatching it away they had it up until September, but now like a lot of states are just getting rid of it starting now and then in the coming months. Um, I keep up with stuff like that as a tourist, you know, watch, watch the little headlines and the, the dudes on YouTube who are trending now. Now they're trending. The finance dudes, you know, Uranus and Taurus, they are the ones that are um, the most popularly watched and stuff like that and followed. So yeah, I've been following what's going on for astrological research and, you know, to to keep my friends up with all this shit too. And I've noticed Saturn uh, slowing down, getting ready to go retrograde in his shadow period and he's squaring Uranus. And I told you guys, even with the new moon in Taurus, that the new moon in Taurus is going to bring some new development that has to do with money and um look what they announced you know with the new moon and taurus energy and then also this aspect as well is uh the unemployment thing you know they're they're taking away that extra money per week and some states are completely taking away unemployment or um yeah something like that it, it's been a few days and mercury's and gemini don't expect me to remember every fucking detail but <laughs> something along those lines money is changing uh our leaders and the government saturn uh taking care of the collective which is aquarius they're backtracking on shit just like last year 2020 when saturn hit aquarius and they put up all these boundaries and these rules that had to do with social distancing and then when saturn went retrograde around this time of year last year they started backtracking okay now we're lifting the bands on stuff and you can start gathering but we're slowly but surely doing it and you have to you know still follow this rule and that rule that's what's happening this time but with money with this aspect to uranus very strong you know is um okay well we gave you guys money now we're backtracking we thought it was gonna help now we're seeing that it doesn't motherfuckers are still chilling at home they're not working they don't want to go back to work so yeah we're taking back saturn retro is taking back retrograding retro you know on the shit that he gave us when he was direct and it's a slow but sure process and it's gradual but it's still happening you know so yeah this is what's cracking with saturn retrograde um let's see saturn retrograde he oh, dang it i forgot to write down the date damn you mercury <laughs> of when he goes direct so he's um he's going retrograde it looks like he's gonna be exactly squaring uranus like in the middle of june so expect more developments you know with finances and the government and stuff like that around the middle of june also and because we also have an eclipse at that time too shit right on time for that all right but yeah saturn is retrograde um he goes back to looks like oh my god he's retrograde for fucking ever all right he so he gets back to six degrees of um aquarius and then he goes direct looks like in mid-october yo okay October 10th. So um, pretty much everything that Saturn was doing from 13 all the way back to six degrees, he's reviewing, revising, restructuring, taking some things back and stuff like that. So starting with February of 2021, all the way up to now, which is mid-May 2021, all that shit is going to be reviewed. So um, in your personal life, wherever Aquarius is at, 
there could be stuff that's being backtracked, being redone, restructured and whatever. OK, so starting now with um, the 23rd of May and then um, on the 23rd of May, this is when the moon moves into Scorpio and stays for a couple days. I might I might just save talking about it more for next week. But yeah, moon and Scorpio days, you guys already know it's time to put on your little black hoodie, but it might be hot AF in some places. So maybe not literally put on the hoodie, but, you know. Like just energetically speaking, put on your black hoodie and your your sunglasses and your your black face mask and just be, you know, what I'm saying just be low key with your headphones on listening to some brooding ass Scorpio artists, some emo screamo music, some um, back in the day 90s alternative music from the Pluto and Scorpio generation, you know. Uh, and I know I always say the weekend he's King Supreme Scorpio moon conjoined to Pluto. So yeah, his, his stuff could be pretty like scorpionic and moody, whatever moody music you listen to, that's what's going to be in your headphones, right? Moon and Scorpio days. We're more protective over ourselves, our energy, our privacy, our private worlds, our emotions. We don't want to show them to the world or to anybody. We just want to keep them to ourselves. And we may be more interested in, um, you know, viewing or listening to stuff that's more on the taboo side, the darker side of life, the underworld, you know, um, not literally the underworld, like evil, but, you know, like the taboo, darker side, stuff to do with prostitution, gangs, prison, uh, murders, mysteries, watching the first 48, watching Snapped, watching Deadly Women, you know, stuff like that, watching movies that are like Psycho, um, the old Psycho movie or yeah, horror movies, stuff like that. You, we're more interested in things like that and uh, just being low key you know so anyway that's it you guys for the weekly forecast for may 16th through the 23rd thank you for listening don't forget to cop you a little horoscope i either for the month of may going in on mercury retro jupiter and pisces and the sagittarius eclipse is coming up next week in your sign what it means specifically for your sign um and also you know going in on those even more on the yearly horoscopes and for the whole year, what do those cycles mean for you? Okay. So thank you guys for listening and um, take care of yourselves. Try to survive this Mercury retro bullshit. <laughs> we can get through it. And I will see you guys in my next one. All right. Peace. Peace.